That first time, if a person is getting symptoms like fever, cough, shortness of breathing, tachycardia, and if these things are happening with the body of a person, then what happens to the person? He first doing the self quarantine for the 14 days. When he's using the self quarantine for the 14 days, he should monitor whether my fever is getting rising, whether my fever is meant to the set or getting more worse, and talk about these things with their family doctor or the doctor. And to talk about the cough, if the cough is becoming the more productive, that's a problem for the person. And think about whether it's giving the more worse or it decreasing this cough or making the non productive. And uh, if you talk about the shortness of breath, think about the shortness of breath. If it's giving the worse, day by day it's giving the worse, that's a problem for the person. Think about it. Why is my cough is going or my wife's shortness of breath going the down or it's giving the word worse? And uh, a person, whenever a person has the COVID-19 or against the coronavirus, that is the dehydration. And uh, why is the dehydration due to the fear? When the fear gets increased, that a person needs the dehydration. When there is dehydration, there is not the product of the anaphurin. Monitor all these things in the 14 days. When I monitor all these things in the 14 days, discuss with your doctor that I have these things. When you discuss these things, that doctor will ask you what's happening with your body if a person gets the positive. What should he do? What the doctor was how to do about these cases? So first of all, when there is increasing fever, the person gets the dehydrate. And what's that? How can we give the fruits to the patients? Let's talk about one by one. For example, here, look at here. If we give the fluid frequently, fluid in the frequently, that with the pulmonary edema, how this leads the pulmonary edema, let's talk here, as our and I'll try to make it more beautiful for you. This is the alveoli. As we know in the previous video, we had discussed about the alveoli because the fluid gets in in our alveoli. When the fluid gets in in our alveoli, that leads to problem to the pneumocytes also here. And these fluids remain in the alveoli, that takes the shortness of the breath due to the damage on the type 1 pneumocytes. So the fluids remain in this. So how we can give the fluids to a patient who has the dehydration due to the fever? The fluids should be intravenously. Intravenously means that the fluids should be given throughout the serene. So, first thing that the person is getting the de dehydrated, the fluids should be given the intravenously, not giving the fluids frequently. First point, here I will write it intravenous fluids. What are the fluids that they drink girls lactate? One of the fluids is ring girls lactate. Ring girls lactate. Ring girls lactate. So the intravenously, not giving the fluids for the oral healthy. So fluids should be given the intravenously. And one of the fluids is a ringo selected in second fluid given that that's normal selling. Normal slide can be given to the patient. And I will write it here. Normal selling. If this fluid is given the oral, uh, orally, that leads to pulmonary edema. Pulmonary edema because more fluid will be accumulated in the alveolar life. And through the alveolar leg, there will be the shortness of the breath. So, fluids should be given intravenously. And these fluids, not even frequently, for example, will get fluid uh, continuously. That leads all with the pulmonary edema here. So, these fluids should be given sparingly. I'll make it from the spread color, so don't you confess. Sparingly. That there should be a gap between the fluids given. For example, you are giving the fluids now, there should be the time gap between the fluids, and after that, you can give the fluids, not giving the fluids frequently. That leads to disease, that's a pulmonary edema, much more fluid will be accumulated in, uh, in the interstitium. 
Okay, this was about the fluids. How can we give the fluids to the patient? Now we'll talk about the what are the drugs given to the patient as first there is the increasing fever. In order to decrease the fever, what should we give? That there's one drug, antipyretic drug. That antipyretic is what and that's a drug that can decrease the fever. What the drug is tylenol? That can reduce the fever. One of the drug is tylenol. What does it do, this tylenol? Because the patient has the COVID-19, again, you can see coronavirus. He has the increasing fear. One year is increasing fear, that is the dehydration. So, in order to decrease the fear, decrease the body temperature, so we should get the tylenol, this is antipyretics. So, this tylenol decreases the fear. It decreases the fear. And there are some other drugs that can recover a patient having the coronavirus. There are some certain drugs, but the one of the drugs is remdesivir. Remdesivir. What does it do, Rem remdesivir? We'll talk a little bit about the previous video, what we have done in the previous video. So, I will rub it here. In previous video, I had made the type 2 pneumocyte here, as uh, the alveoli got two types of cells, one is type 1 pneumocyte and type 2 pneumocyte. I will make the type 2 pneumocyte here. This is type 2 pneumocyte. And this type 2 pneumocyte has a special receptor here. Special receptor. What this receptor is? This receptor is ACE2. This receptor is called ACE2. And when virus coming towards this receptor, which virus? Coronavirus. When it comes to us, this, I will make it a different color. Okay, I will make it black. So, this is a virus. Having the single stranded RNA. What is virus? It has uh, some proteins here. And this protein, which gets attached with this ACE2 receptor, this is called a S-spike. S-spike. When it goes down here, when it attaches to this receptor, this virus goes down. It goes inside this pneumocyte, type 2 pneumocyte. When it goes down, I will make it here, this virus. This virus. And this virus remains in the endosome. Endosome, inside it. It remains in the endosome. And here's a genetic material, of material that's a single-stranded RNA. There's one enzyme. That enzyme is called the RNA-dependent RNA polymerase. That enzyme is called RNA-dependent RNA polymerase. And this RNA-dependent RNA polymers make the much more copies of this single-stranded RNA. When it makes much more copies, means there are the chances to make the uh, multiplication of these uh, viruses, and there will be further more viruses, and they go out of the pneumocyte, that means the other pneumocytes here. So this RNA-dependent forms more copies of RNA of the uh, coronavirus or this virus. So what does it do? This remdesivir. This remdesivir going and attacks this enzyme, RNA-dependent RNA polymer, means it inhibits it. It doesn't allow its function to do it. So when it is non-functional, RNA-dependent RNA polymer, can it meet the 
uh, more RNAs here. No, it can't make the more RNAs. So the number of the virus getting the decrease. So sometimes we get the RAM that we are first it was using for Ebola virus in the previous some disease Ebola virus it was using that time. So RAM that we are also giving to the, to make the inhibition of this RNA dependent RNA polymerase. So let's talk about the other drug. One of the drug is that is the anti-malarial drug. Anti-malarial drug. Anti-malarial drug. Which one is anti-malarial drug? That one of the drug is that's called chloroquine. What does it do, chloroquine? Here is our endosome. Let's talk about how does it works, this chloroquine. This chloroquine helps here, it comes here, and it prevents the virus to get in in endosome. This is the endosome. It prevents the virus to go inside the endosome. And there's one reason when the virus doesn't go in the endosome and this doesn't uh, take its uh, RNA and make its more uh, copies and it doesn't allow to get it to translate and form the polyproteins. When this uh, gets uh, inhibited, this endosome that doesn't release more replication of the viruses. So this was the color grain that's the anti malarial drug. Now let's talk the other drugs. Yeah, the other days that's uh, one is a uh, return of year. Let's I'm um, talk it here with return of year. Return of year. Return of year. Okay. As we had discussed, this uh, gets to translated and form the proteins, polyproteins, and when the virus gets Transit and from the mRNA, from the mRNA, let's talk about translation which takes place. Translation. And it forms polyproteins. These form polyproteins. These are the polyproteins. From these polyproteins, there is a one enzyme that's called the proteases. Proteases. And these proteases help the polyproteins to form the capsids and their spikes of the virus. Form the spikes. These are the spikes. And form the capsid for the virus. This is a capsid for the virus. This return here, what does it do? This return here, this return here goes and inhibits this enzyme protease. When it inhibits this protease, can it make the capsid? Can it make the spikes? No, it doesn't make the spikes. And this leads to the degradation of the viruses. So this return here helps to decrease this this formation of the capsid and it inhibits this proteases and the proteases helps to make the capsid, these spikes, S spikes, these proteins and this return of it inhibits this protease. If this is inhibited, then what does it do? The capsid will not be formed. And what is it ultimately do? The virus can't be made smaller copies. And there are other drugs. Okay. There is another drug that's called tocilizumab. I'll write it here. This is tocilizumab. What does it do, the tocilizumab? As we had discussed, for example, this is our alveoli. I will make alveoli here. This alveolar, and from the alveolar here is some our cells, 
what this is top two nematocytes and this is type one nematocytes. These cells are present in all this allele. So this alveoli when the, it makes them much more copies this coronavirus. So what it does? They are the some uh, chemical mediators. Some chemical inflammatory mediators are released. When these chemical mediators are released from this, when the chemical inflammatory mediators are released, they go, and they are the special cells that are the phagocytal cells that bring. For example, one of the phagocytal cells is the macrophage. When the macrophage inflammatory chemical mediators are released, here's our macrophage, for example, this is a macrophage. Okay, these mediators of this macrophage come at the site. When the macrophage goes at the site, what does it do? This is macrophage. Macrophage. It released the cytokine. One of the, as I had discussed in the previous video, cytokines. There was the cytokines that I will make the spray video on the cytokine. Don't worry about that. One of the cytokine, major cytokine, that I had discussed in the previous video, that's the interleukin six. On the interleukin one and uh, tumor necrotic factor alpha is also released. So I'm talking about the interleukin six. This macrophage released the interleukin six. Interleukin 6, also is interleukin 1, tumor necrotic factor alpha. Okay, what does it interleukin 6 do? This interleukin 6 calls, or we can say it is the cytokine, it can call other cells, please help it out. We have some problems here, so please come, there are some problems. This interleukin 6 calls the neutrophils, one of the type of the white blood cells. So, through this interleukin 6, release it from the macrophage, it will call other cells, whether the health cell that is neutrophil. I'll try to make the neutrophil here. This is for example neutrophil. In very dangerous mood because here is some problem. Okay. This neutrophil releases some reactive oxygen species. And what does the reactive oxygen species do? This damages our type 1 nemocytes, leads to the with the impairment of the gases exchange because the type 1 nemocyte is responsible for the gases exchange. So this releases neutrophil, this neutrophil. I'll write it from the different color. Neutrophil. Neutrophil. This releases ROS, what's ROS? Reactive oxygen species. So this is due to this interleukin 6 calls these neutrophils. So there's a one drug. Which drug? Tocilizumab. What does it do, this tocilizumab? This tocilizumab, this tocilizumab inhibits, or we can say block the function of the interleukin 6. When the interleukin 6 is inhibited, we can say it's blocked. What does it do? This will not kill the neutrophil, and neutrophils don't rush out in the reactive oxygen species, and these we will, uh, we will be freed from this damage of the type 1 nemocytes and we will be more frequently and we prevent from the type 1 nemocyte damage and due to this tocilizumab in interleukin 6 okay now we will talk about the what are the precautions of this coronavirus so let's talk about the precautions of the coronavirus before I'm going to tell about the precautions of this so there are the other drugs for even corticosteroids they are also given in this Disease coronavirus, what you stress? I'll write it here. Corticosteroids. But unfortunately, we don't have a vaccine until in the chance that around 13 skull that will be from the 2000 until 2021. And the vaccine will be more difficult, but it's not present now. So that will run until the 2021. So these are the drugs. So let's talk about the precautions of this. Okay, I will write it here. <clears throat> so 
I like to have it at three costumes. For COVID-19. Okay, we're to the precautions. First of all, we should wash your hands. For example, we should not touch all the surfaces here while you're with these virus may be present. So whenever you touch the surface, maybe try to prevent from touching the surfaces. Wash your whole hands with the soap. First thing. Wash your hands with the soap. So and use hand sanitizers. And when you wash your hands, maybe they are while still be present, they will rush out here. So when you and don't touch the surface here and there. And if you touch the surface, maybe then wash your hands with the soap and use the hand sanitizer. What the other thing? For example, if you touch your the surfaces here and there, for example, I'll reach here. There's a person. This a person. The person should not touch the T zone. What's T zone? Here. I'll try to make it highlighted. This is a T zone. If you touch the T zone, maybe the wire can infect your the eyes, this nose, and this your lips, this mixed membranes also. So try to touch and do not touch your this T zone. If you touch the T zone, that will lead to an effect. Okay. Now, what are the other steps? What's other right here? Not touch your T zone. Not touch your T zone. And what's the third thing? Precaution about the coronavirus. And try to don't travel while there's more cases. And to try to block your the travel, is that travel this, don't go the outside where there's more cases, for example, in other countries there are high cases. Try to reduce your travel with traveling. So, to reduce travel. Reduce traveling. With the outside where there is more cases. Reduce traveling. All that is the third thing we should discuss here about precautions. Third thing, use masks. Masks. Okay. There are two types of the masks. One is the N95 mask, and second is the surgical mask. I'll write it here. One is N95. N95 mask. And second is surgical mask. Surgical mask. Okay, what's N95 mask or surgical mask? For example, N95 mask, when we can wear this N95 mask. When this person, for example, outside, he's sneezing in front of you, the droplets around they are spreading. This N95 mask spreads to give the droplets uh, prevent or we can see protecting from the droplets to get in. We can see it block 95% of the droplets or we can see sneezing coughing droplets to get in. Or we can see it prevents or it blocks blocks the droplets droplets to get in. This M95 mask. And if you talk about surgical mask, for example, if a person is ill, having symptoms like the cough, sneezing, when you wear this surgical mask, these surgical masks prevent, for example, when you sneeze, when you cough, these surgical masks prevent, to, uh, prevent from these things that goes out. For example, the dramatic within the mask that don't go outside, that doesn't spread outside of the mask. That's about the surgical mask. So use the proper masks. And uh, when you use the mask, they are reduced. We can see that it will be reduced in, in, the, in this uh, coronavirus spreading. And what are the other things are precautions? You 
use protective eye covering. Proper eye covering. Use proper eye covering so they, they will not touch you the T soon that will infect. And use double gloves. Use double gloves. Double gloves. Use double. And get the proper ground. When you do these things, these precautions, that the virus spread will be wireless. There's no risk of the wireless to spread. These are the precautions in the treatment. Hope you understand well.